So, uh, Gary, I, I was just going to leave a couple comments um, in response to your video, but um, I'm blocked on both my channels now, so I'll just post a little short video response to say that, uh, first of all, you're confusing epigenetics with Lamarckism. There's a clear difference. Um, I think MJ Havoc has explained what epigenetics is, and there's plenty of resources on the internet you can use to research it. It's um, not experience or in, in, uh, inherited characteristics passed on to uh, um, subsequent generations, as uh, Lamarck assumed. It's not um, giraffes growing their necks because they want to and passing that trait on to their, to their offspring. Um, it has to do with the uh, way that um, non-genetically based inheritance can occur uh, because, you know, the chemical soup, the protein soup inside of cells can be altered uh, both in somatic and germ cells, and the germ cells is what's significant as far as it being applicable to evolution. Um, because that's what's passed on and, and uh, functions in the next generation. And um, it, it just shows that if we have a gene-centric view of how evolution works and say that it's the gene that makes the organism, we're missing this whole other level of um, what causes phylogenetic expression in a living organism. So uh, it's definitely science. It's been pretty well established as a legitimate, um, you know, scientific research program for at least, you know, a couple of decades now, but it's start it's starting to uh, become more significant recently because, um, well, we're finding that it plays a larger role um, than we had thought in the past. Um, as far as complexity theory goes, um, all complexity theory is trying to do is understand morphology, which Darwin never touched, never discussed. Um, you know, the most he said about it was that there seems to be a correlation of growth. That, uh, you know, as an example, cats with blue eyes tend to be deaf. Um, in other instances where organisms, um, one trait is always connected to another trait. Um, you know, short arms is always connected with long legs in whatever, you know, make-believe organism. That's just how uh, he noticed that um, the body plans of organisms aren't made of separate parts that each evolve separately. They evolve together. And, um, but that was all he said about it. He didn't offer any explanation for it. Um, inherited mutation and natural selection is no explanation for morphology, <clears throat> for the development of an organism, a multicellular organism, from a single cell to hundreds of billions of cells. Um, so complexity theory is an attempt to apply mathematical modeling to <clears throat> how this developmental process works. And nothing in evolutionary theory before complexity theory was developed, um, besides maybe uh, Goethe in the 18th century, ever even uh, tried to understand this phenomena scientifically. So, um, you know, this stuff isn't magical, phantasmagorical nonsense. It's science. It's well established as science. Um, not only will they not kick me out of university for studying it and talking about it, they will encourage me to get a PhD in it um, because it's such a, a quickly growing uh, field, epigenetics and complexity theory. Um, and down in the comments, Gary, you said that, uh, what do you say here? You know, you're, you're quoting things that, you, you know, assuming all these, these hidden agendas that I have. You said, Matt clearly intends to use it, epigenetics, to support some nutty theory that the universe has a will to create consciousness or useful, purposeful complexity. Um, you know, find me a video where I said anything like what you're implying uh, and then, you know, we'll discuss that accusation because, you know, uh, I read what you say about me and I don't recognize myself, so there's a problem there. Um, but yeah, I guess I'll leave it at that. Um, later.